Okay, so this video is for some of you guys who are working uh, thin flakes that have one or more areas that are extremely thick and you're wondering how to reduce these areas without breaking the, uh, the flake. Now this is an extreme example to illustrate the point. Um, now if I wanted to work this piece into an arrowhead I would just uh, find a way to eliminate this, this this entire thick spot and just work with this thin spot. Uh, so this is not really a good example but it, it shows you the extremes that can happen when using thinning flakes <clears throat> to make arrowheads with uh, instead of the normal spalls or you know blades from a core. Uh, let's see if I can find a better piece. This one here has a uh, a large bulb of percussion, a thick area in comparison to the rest of the flake. Uh, and a lot of you guys are having trouble, which is understandable, reducing the thick areas without snapping the rest of it, because the rest of it is pretty thin. Now, uh, I, I normally wouldn't work this area at all either. I'd snap it off somehow. Just snap it and take it off. Which I know it doesn't help, but uh, I want to get a better example. Now, uh, a lot of you guys are having trouble with the very fragile materials, so I think I'm going to work on this one here first. This is a heat treated uh, Keokuk, or uh, I think some people call it Peoria chert. Anyway, it's very fragile, and when it gets thin, it, it, it'll crack extremely easily like glass. So I just want to show you what I do with pieces like this. If I want to try to maximize the amount of area that I can use for an arrowhead, you know, I will reduce these thick spots down. But um, my 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 favorite tactic is just to eliminate that area by breaking it off. Like I would only use this part here. I just snap it right there and discard this part unless I wanted to make a really small arrowhead. But what I'm going to do in this video is, is see if I can reduce that down. So what I'd like to do first is uh, get a general shape. Get rid of all the excess mass. That makes the whole piece stronger to begin with. Because it requires a lot of force to remove the thick areas and you don't want a lot of mass hanging hanging off the sides of that large mass because that increases the uh, you know the vibrations in the piece and the end snap and that sort of thing when you're hitting it now indirect percussion can help minimize the end snap because you're not shocking the piece very much if as long as, as long as you're doing this right <laughs> Um, you shouldn't be feeling a lot of force on your hand when you're doing indirect percussion the way I do it, the freehand style. That's one of the whole points behind using a, an indirect flaker is it bypasses the uh, necessity for you know firm support and heavy strikes. You uh, you're kind of shortcutting the sh kind of shortcutting the way that you're getting the flakes to release. You're using a very hard material in a very small area, and the flakes release easily. It reduces the shock on the whole piece. Now I can do this with hammerstone too, but it's it's not as accurate. And of course, when you reduce accuracy, you increase the chance of breakage. Now, a lot of you guys are spending quite a bit of money on high quality material like this, heat treated stuff, and you want to try to maximize the s surface area that you're using. Uh, 
as opposed to slabbing the, ple the piece, you know, cutting slabs out of a big piece, uh, you want to be able to uh, use thinning flakes, which is fine. Perfectly reasonable. And you find these thinning flakes in debitage piles from other flint nappers. So when you're starting out, a lot of times all you have is these thinning flakes that are thin in, in uh, you know, 80% or 90% of the surface area, but you got a real thick spot that you need to reduce down. Okay. So, I just want to get rid of any excess mass. And I usually make the ne more narrow end the point, regardless of where the thickness lies or where the thickness is. So this is going to be the point up here. Now some some guys will say, well, um, you know, you should make this the point all the time because you need to remove a lot of mass anyway, and that'll help you remove this thick area. And that's true. You can do it that way. But I, I find with beginners, when they start with a thick area for the tip, they end up with a thick area on the tip. If that makes sense. So I've reduced this down uh, to you know a basic shape. There's some mass here, and what I'm going to do is instead of going for it like I normally would and just try to eliminate it, I'm going to create a harder scenario, a more difficult scenario before I actually remove that lump. I'm going to trim around that lump trim off the easy stuff first and then leave that lump for last. Uh, like a lot of the a lot of uh, new nappers will do that and it's actually harder for you to do the easy stuff first and then come you know try to get the hard stuff later. And I know in my videos, a lot of times I jump around and I, I do some of the easy stuff first, but uh, in general, I, t I try to attack the hardest areas first. Attack the thickest areas first. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack the, the, the thin areas first, and then I'm going to try to tackle that, if I don't break the piece. <laughs> So just for the video, I'm going to make it hard on myself to eliminate that lump, just so I can show you guys what I call a damage control, a, a damage control technique. Um, which is what that is, if you're, if you're trying to remove a really thick spot, it's a lot like damage control because you can nap yourself into that situation pretty, pretty easily when, when you're starting out and to get yourself out of it you're going to need some damage, con damage control techniques All right, so I'm, I'm napping this pretty much like a, a newbie would nap this short flakes to get the decent outline for an arrowhead oops that was that was just force of habit running that ridge anyway should have done that but what I'm going to do is Just take some more of this mass away from around that bad spot first. And my kids will do that too. They'll they'll nap a piece like this, and you know they'll skip that big area because they know they can't do it. And then they'll hand me a flint nap piece of stone that's got a a problem spot in it, 
and asked me if I could just remove that <laughs> so they can continue. Okay. The wind is picking up. I hope it's not creating some noise on the microphone. I don't, I'll try to sit closer to the microphone too. Okay, so that's that's pretty difficult right there. And if I really abrade it and uh, put a lot of cracks into it, it's even harder. So let me do that. I'm just going to batter the edge really bad to uh, make it really difficult to remove flakes. Okay, so let's see. I should probably move a little bit more of that. Okay, so new people are usually stuck somewhere like this, or with a situation like this, where they just you know, strike on it, strike on it, and they, they're afraid to go any further. And the edge is really hard to to work with. I'm just going to grind it a lot to simulate the, the constant uh, nipping at it with a pressure flaker. Okay. Now, the second nature tells me that it's not that, you know, it's really not going to be that difficult. Um, because I deal with this so often. Um, I'm trying to make it as difficult as possible. When it's sticking out like this, it's actually not too bad. You got a lot. I got a lot of mass here. I can knock that off. So, um, if it if it was like that, you know, with less of that bulge sticking out, it might be the more difficult. But let me just take care of this anyway. So what I do when a, if one of my kids hands me something like this, or if I have a question, um, the easiest thing for me to do is just to whittle it down, come in from the sides and whittle it down. Just start in an area and work my way that way. Since I got to lose mass anyway, I got to lose that anyway. But if I want to maximize the area and just focus on this. Um, let's see. What I'm doing now is I'm looking for a little spot that I can start napping with a small flake. So I'm not going to interfere much with the outline. I'm going to try to keep as much of that as possible and probably even keep that a little bit convex there too. Instead of taking all that off, I'll just kind of trim it off. Trim off this hard spot, or this thick spot. But I've got to start somewhere, since everything's rounded. I've got to start somewhere with a uh, fresh edge to it. And to attack it directly, I mean, I can attack it directly, but that, that's what causes the breakage. Uh, the main complaint is, you know, let's attack this directly and just smack it right here and get rid of some of that. It doesn't matter, you know, what this platform looks like. Let's just smack that and take that off. But with delicate material like this, the approach is to be careful. The best approach is to be careful with it. So 
there's usually some little area where I can get a fresh flake off like right there I don't know if you can see that just study the piece so I guess the the whole point is just study it very carefully and there's usually an area where you can get your flaker in there and remove a fresh flake and then from there you can continue and just whittle it down and see now you got a nice beveled edge and just wear it down, don't try to pop, all, pop that thing off all at once Okay, so I usually hand it back to them if uh, if one of my kids hands me like that, hands me something like this, I'll hand it back to I'll hand it back to her like this. Let's see, I guess you can work on the rest. <laughs> okay, so majority of that is gone. Uh, now, you know, you can trim it to the more of a, the general shape, but that lump is gone. Now the, I guess that one was fairly easy. I don't know. Here's the uh, the next one. It's also kind of a kind of a thinning flake on a larger nodule, but it's it's got unusual contours to it. Uh, again. I try to eliminate as much mass from around it as possible. Now if I want to maintain as big a piece as possible, of course I've got to be careful with the trimming. In this case, some of this can't be used anyway, so you got to lose that anyway. Let me see if I can. Uh, and once you lose this, it's it's fairly simple to get rid of that. Um, I'm trying to find a piece that actually is extremely difficult to work. Uh, I looked through my my stack of of uh, flakes, and most of my flakes I remove. Are not thinning flakes. They're they're kind of like Levallois flakes. So I don't really get a, a big thin area with a one big lump or one big bulb of percussion. Let me see. This one's got a dip in it. So if this was flatter, let's see. Most of this is thin and we got one really big thick area. Yeah, this is delicate heat treated material, so um, but it's still not thin enough that some of you guys were working with. Let's see. This might be worth exploring here. The whole piece is really thin and it's got some thick areas. Let's try this one here. You 
know, how do you remove this part in there? Well, first of all, you got to decide where you want your arrowhead to be. You know, you can't use the whole thing because it's all warped. You got to remove what you're not going to use anyway. So I just trimmed off the obvious. Now, uh, some some guys will they won't decide what the tip and the base is right away, and they'll just go ahead and try to thin the whole thing out, and then decide and keep the maximum surface area. So I'll do that. That's not what I nor that's what not what I do, but. For the sake of the video and the, the problems associated with trying to get the maximum area, I'm going to just do it like some of you guys are doing and just thin everything down and then decide later, you know, keep both points here and keep this wide and try to maximize the surface area. So let's see. Well, I gotta lose this no matter what. I gotta lose all this here because it's not in line with the rest of the piece. So I have to lose this anyway. I don't see how I can keep that. So I'm gonna lose this here and make it pointed here, and then I'm gonna attack that mass in the middle. Okay, so it was easier to flake on this side, so I I flaked it like a, a new person would. But actually, you're supposed to be flaking it on the other side so that you can run flakes across, longer flakes to get rid of that concavity. I mean, the convexity. But I just wanted to show you what how to deal with that too. Uh, most people will flake where it's easiest, and then they'll wonder what to do after. Okay, so I didn't need to abrade, but I'm abrading because a lot of people will abrade at this stage when they're starting out, thinking thinking this this is the way to strengthen the edge. When, you know, it's not a bad idea, but I prefer to bevel it and then abrade it instead of going straight for the abrading on these thin edges. Because this, this makes it harder, but that's why I'm doing it. 
I want to try to make it as hard as I can on myself. And I'm trying to remember the question my friend had about these thick areas on a very thin flake. Okay, so I don't recommend doing a lot of abrading at this stage like this. But I'll show you how to deal with it if you do end up doing something like that. Okay, so again, like in the in the previous example, you look around and you see that there are areas that you can attack to get you into a fresh flake. Uh, to start you off with a fresh edge uh, because you know an abraded edge is good for sending in large flakes and doing pressure work and so forth but for shaping for thinning I guess yes you do need to abrade but it's a different mentality it's hard to explain it's really hard to explain um, uh, I'll just go ahead and, and go ahead and do it. I'm going to look for a spot where I can find an area where I can remove a fresh flake. Okay, so sort at the very tip. And I'm just going to zigzag. Drive some flakes in. Try to get rid of that convexity. Without losing too much surface area. And I'm still doing the small flake, big flake technique. Like right here, I'll take a small flake or two. Come back and get that fresh platform set up. I can abrade it too, but it's, it's, it's delicate and high grade material, so I don't really need to abrade it very much. Um, I can, you know, scratching back with a flaker is good. Not much abrasion is, is necessary. Take, just take a big flake and some one small flake that way, small flake this way, another small flake to set up the next platform for the big flake, and then come back and take the bigger flake. Now a lot of times this goes really fast when I'm flint napping. Sometimes I'll skip a little flake. And just move over enough to catch to catch the next, you know, opportunistic flake. I take another big one and I won't do the little ones in between. Anyway, that took care of a lot of that convexity. Just by you know zigzagging it, and you know as I'm zigzagging, I also do the small flake, big flake technique where I, you know, I, I zig this way, zag with a big flake, 
zig this way, small, zig this way, big, zig that way, small, zig this way, big. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so this is the part where a lot of you guys are having trouble. You want to just really strike in there and get a big flake to remove that. Now it is possible to do that. And the, the less you grind the better. That's why I'm grinding a lot. <laughs> so, um, if, you're, if you're in a situation where you've got too much grinding, you can just, you know, make a new platform, which is what I suggest. Just back off a little bit. Trim it, make a new platform. It's not as ground, and then send a flake across. So, and I'm going to go up to a larger flaker. Now, the beauty of uh, these, sh you know, short punches, relatively short, and behind the knee, I can switch these out easily. Whereas, if you have a setup where you have a permanent arm holding your punch, like a rocker punch, you can't switch those out very easily. So that's why I developed this behind the knee technique so I can switch my tools out. It's not only faster that way, uh, it's just faster overall. And I can do rapid strikes without having to reposition. And if it's a rocker arm, I don't have to raise a rocker arm and hit it down and then raise it again. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let me take this flake here. See what happens. So I just went across the top. And with high grade materials you can do that. And a lot of you guys are having trouble with the high grade material. Very thin. Because it is very brittle. But it also has the advantage that you can run long flakes. Uh, I'm getting close to the 30 minute mark where the camera usually cuts off. Uh, Let's see. Well, I'm going to continue. If it cuts off, that's fine. It'll just start up again, and I'll have to, you know, break this up into two videos. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim down this edge and try to make a difficult spot again somewhere. Let's see. still kind of convex but normally what I do in that situation I just lose some of the tip see what I did there I just beveled the tip that way it brought it down and it it's a lot straighter a few thinning flakes
Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to create some uh, some thick areas along the edge. Okay, so that's pretty rounded, that's pretty thick, and I'll just show you what I do. Let's see, I'm going to try to create a difficult spot here. A more difficult spot than this because this is still not that bad. I mean, I can catch this platform, send a flake there, catch that platform. I can still thin this out even though it's all rounded and, and messed up. How do I make it more difficult? Um, let's see. I don't know. It's already 36 minutes. So I'll just go ahead and and uh, make a preform out of this the way it is. And all I'm doing is I, I can see areas that are weak that I can take opportunistic flakes. even though it's been heavily ground I just know where it is it's weak and I'm not sure if that's all from experience or if you can actually 